Hello, I'm Pluto Burns, and welcome to Eagle Land. For those of you wondering how I got my chair back, well, I had to make a trade. Your tribute is acceptable. Wait, you're just doing this to distract me from the show, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Well, it's working. It's gonna take forever before I find another good metal slinky. Anyway, on today's episode, I will be covering a harem manga. Harem mangas are the romantic comedies of the manga world. They all exist in some netherworld where lots of members of the opposite sex fawn over our protagonists, despite the fact that they rarely have any personality whatsoever. And the girls are almost always a collection of various fetishized personality tropes. Lots of skin and lots of gags. That's the formula for a standard harem manga. Now, much like our romantic comedies, most harems are harmless if completely vapid. Feel-good stories that collapse under the slightest amount of critical thought. And that doesn't make the stories bad. They are short and sweet, feel-good pieces of easily digestible entertainment. And there are some truly standout examples of the genre. Rosario Plus Vampire is not one of them, but it is solidly above average. So let's glide into Rosario Plus Vampire. Yeah, the plus is part of the official title. So who is our male protagonist for this romp? Why, it's Skune McBlandy Pants! Skune is so incredibly average that it's played up as a joke. So why in the hell is he attending this creepy school for monsters? Well, he failed to get into all other high schools, and his dad picked up a flyer for this school from a creepy monk wandering down the road, mumbling to himself. Thanks, Dad. We won't see you for the rest of the manga! So right off the bus, Sukune gets flattened by a girl, improbably riding a bike to school. She is, of course, our main female love interest, as well as a vampire. Her name is Mocha, and she falls madly in love with Blandy Pants after drinking his delicious blood. McBlandy Pants is freaked out at first, but Mocha is just so incredibly cute and the model of feminine politeness that he decides to forgive her, despite the fact that he was gushing blood from his neck not two seconds earlier. And then coincidence of all coincidences, Java and Blandy are in the same class. She immediately latches on to him, which makes all the other boys in the class insanely jealous. This leads into a staple of the series, some boy getting all pissy that Espresso is always hanging off of Skune, challenging him to an alpha dog monster fight that he obviously can't take part in, whereupon he removes Chai Latte's rosary, releasing her inner vampire to kick the enemy in the face. And yes, the fight usually ends with a kick, because I believe the author likes to draw her in these kinds of poses. I'm almost positive she is wearing underwear in this picture. So now that we have the main cast, it's time to bring out the Fetish Girl Harem Roll Call! Big Boobs, Lolicon, Creepy Stalker, and the Big Sister Closet Pervert Combo! Of course I need to give you a better summary than that. Big Boobs is a succubus. She had planned to seduce and enslave every boy in the school to her whim, but they were all blown away by Latte. So, as revenge, she attempts to seduce Skune, but he is too devoted to his morning coffee and turns her down. She attacks Mocha Frappuccino, whereupon she is slammed into the ground. She then comes back later and decides she will be a friend rival of Mocha's. Creepy Stalker is an ice witch with the totally awesome power to shape ice and freeze people. She stalks Blandy Pants for a while, but then gets violent when he remains devoted to Macchiato. Hmm. That sounds very familiar. The big sister character with latent masochistic tendencies is a witch with the redeemed villain backstory. She originally attacked our heroes, but after getting soundly beaten, Skune extended to her the hand of friendship, because McBlandy is an incredibly naive wanker who believes friendship is magic. Yay! Ugh. The hell was that clip about? And last but not least, we have the 12-year-old Lolicon witch character. Let me speak seriously for a moment. I have already dealt with the Loli phenomenon before, so let me take a moment to reassure my viewers. Rosario and the Vampire shows remarkable restraint when it comes to its token Loli character. 
She has a deep friendship with Mocha and Skune, but at no point is it indicated that that relationship is sexual. The author also refrains from drawing her in over-sexualized poses. She is primarily for exposition and dropping objects on people's heads using her magic wand. So, with the cast established, what makes this manga good? Well, frankly, it's funny. Blandy Pants freakouts about being in a dangerous school for monsters are well-timed and hilariously illustrated. He also doesn't deal well with the girls fawning all over him. This can be kind of annoying in harem mangas, with the male lead getting all flustered and going, Oh my god, boobs, I don't know what to do! Here, the joke is usually reserved for when his harem girls start butting heads and he isn't sure how to keep the peace. The school also has a very cool and consistent horror theme to it, an unusual choice in romance harems. The artist also plays the erotic drawings card well. Rather than having the girls randomly falling over and flashing panties every time they enter a room, most of the sexualized drawings are reserved for the battle scenes, when it makes a bit more sense to see the girls being flung into compromising positions. Sure, it's a bit tonally off, but it's less distracting than having the girls fall over themselves the moment they get lightly nudged. Now, battles are also a big part of this manga. Most chapters end with either Mocha kicking someone, or Skune punching them when he later develops his own monster powers. But these aren't the best battle scenes ever. Most of the battles tend to play out like this. I am the villain for this chapter! Monster attack! Ha! It has no effect. But then I receive plot-relevant morale boost! Oh my god, it works this time! That's not to say I hate the fight scenes. They are nice, dramatic endings for the chapters, and most of them come with a neat little Monsterpedia entry explaining a little bit about the villain of the week. But this is definitely a romance-centric manga, and the battle scenes don't get a lot of panels to flesh them out, though they are very well drawn. The manga is at its best when it's being funny and playing with the girls' budding heads. One of the best moments for the manga is right at the end. Chapter 39 has the school being temporarily closed after the whole student body rampaged. So, Skune returns to his human world home for the first time. But naturally, all the girls follow him home. This leads to all kinds of wonderful shenanigans with Blandy's mom. After an unusually hilarious bathroom scene, Blandy's mom collapses after watching a brigade of half-dressed wet girls run out of the house. Pumpkin Spice Latte rushes to take care of her, and the manga uses this perfect opportunity to have some romantic development. Skune's mom reveals that he has been calling home a lot, talking about how much he likes half-calf soy, no-foam latte, not too hot with a shot of vanilla and a dusting of nutmeg, fresh ground only, make it a medium and a large to-go cup. Meanwhile, outside, the girls are destroying the neighborhood in a hilariously blatant display of monster powers. Then, Mocha shows up and puts an end to such foolishness. Rosario plus Vampire is 40 chapters long, but that isn't the end of the story. No, it picks up in a whole new series of books called Rosario plus Vampire Season 2. I don't know why they made the cut like that, but it's not unheard of for a manga to continue its story in a slightly differently titled series. Season 2 picks up exactly where this one left off, and I don't think it's as good. Now don't misunderstand, Season 2 is not bad, simply different. The story shifts away from the comedy and more towards the action. We see Skune developing his monster powers, and the threats grow in scale to the point where they are trying to save all humanity. It's not wrong to make the story more serious and make Skune a more prototypical hero. I just don't like that change. I prefer the lighthearted comedy. If you liked Season 1, go ahead and read Season 2. The shift in focus isn't abrupt. They ease you into it over the course of the opening chapters. But if you've read harem manga before and just didn't get it, Rosario is not going to change your opinion. It's clearly written for fans of harem stories. Rosario Plus Vampire is written and drawn by Ikeda Akihisa. He's got one other work called Kilt, which is not available in English at all. But the two seasons of Rosario and the Vampire are available in the States, though season two isn't finished, so you can't get all of it. And I think that's everything. Till next time, I'm Pluto Burns, and this has been Eagle Land. <laughs>
A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side, a little bit of Rita's all I need, a little bit of Tina's what I see, a little bit of Sandra in the sun, a little bit of Mary all night long, a little bit of Jessica, here I am, a little bit of you makes me your man.